Well, I'm really flattered to have been asked to, uh, to speak to a very distinguished audience such as this. But being distinguished is one thing, but being interested in what is happening in our country uh, is quite another. And I'm therefore extremely pleased to be here in this hall. Also for a personal reason, my, one of my daughters uh, chose to come to University College London, and now I can see where some of the little money that I had <laughs> went to. <laughs> now, the, the political scene in Malaysia um, is quite bewildering because we find all of a sudden the government taking action which is contrary, and this is something which is not new, to every principle of democratic practice. We have a good example here of Raja Petra. Uh, we have other examples. Um, Anwar himself uh, is on trial, and he's here on, is it, what is the legal term, on parole or on bail? <laughs> but uh, whatever it is. <laughs> You know, he had this small window of opportunity uh, to interact with, uh, with people like yourself. So I hope you'll, you know, uh, uh, take this great opportunity uh, to ensure that um, he doesn't go to prison because there isn't a single shred of evidence to suggest that what he has been charged with is in fact true. But you know, the government is devilishly clever in putting him on the same charge as before, because if you understand the Malay, and particularly the Muslim psyche, they are prepared to tolerate anything, corruption, adultery, you name it. But when it comes to sodomy, they are totally opposed, and the government, they, they know that no other charge will stick, not so much in the courts of law, which are corrupt in any case, but in the minds of the Malays, particularly those in the rural area uh, on, on whom they depend for their votes. Of course, my main interest, which has been for a long, long time, is Corruption. Now, corruption in Malaysia is not something that um, we can um, just uh, take lightly because I believe that the present state of affairs in our country is wholly attributable to corruption and corrupt leadership. For some strange reason, that is because uh, I was not in any political party some years ago, I was appointed a member of the Royal Commission inquiring into the police service. And what struck us, who are members of the, of the commission, is the fact that every level of the Royal Malaysia Police has been touched by corruption. Now, I'm not suggesting that every single policeman is corrupt. What I'm saying that every level, you know, the lower ranks, the inspectorate, the gazetted officers, right up to the Inspector General of Police. Now, when you have a situation like this in the country, then we are in serious trouble. It's not just the police, the judiciary, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar, you are lawyers. There was a joke at one time when people say that we had the best judges in the world that money could buy. <laughs> and when you have this situation, the whole system breaks down because public confidence has disappeared. And I think this is one of the great problems in our country. You simply do not have any institution left that has not been uh, totally compromised by 22 years of Dr. Mahathir's administration. 
people are often impressed by the Twin Towers, but how much corruption was involved in the building of the Twin Towers and all the great infrastructure development in this country. But I think for ordinary people, if you see someone like Anwar being dragged through the courts, being beaten up, because a lot of that, I'm sure, was self-inflicted. Uh, <laughs> then uh, you have to take, make a stand. Uh, why after... S the mic. Yeah, that's a mic. That's it. Um, of being neutral, that is, being independent, just standing on the sidelines and uh, making um, you know, comments on what was happening in the country. I decided that if I really felt so strongly about some of these issues, then I had to stand up and be counted. Of course, you know, you're making, I am not complaining, a small sacrifice doing this because you're totally wiped off the government radar screen. All of a sudden, I become an enemy of the state. Now, some of you probably um, had the misfortune of uh, or self-inflicted injury of reading some of my comments in the New Sunday Times. It used to be a regular column, but the moment I joined the AP, I was no writing. I was no, no longer writing for the New States Times. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not, uh, I mean, I don't regret that because, you know, it has become nothing more than a government gazette. Um, but this is the sort of marginalization that is taking place simply because, according to them, you're on the wrong side of the political divide. Now, I'm not going to take up too much of your time because you haven't come here to listen to me. Uh, I actually had no intention of being here. I, I was with, uh, with um, uh, Anwar. Uh, in, in Europe, in, uh, in Brussels and uh, Berlin. I've come here solely to see my daughter, but somehow you could not uh, resist whenever Anwar twists your arm <laughs> to say no. Thank you very much.